Welcome to Shadow of Truth with your host, Dave Kranzler from InvestmentResearchDynamics.com and Rory Hall from TheDailyCoin.org. And today is Monday, August the 29th, 2016. And this is our Monday market update. And we appreciate everybody being here. Thank you so much. So, so I see uh, I see the stock market has popped up. Uh, well, the S and P's up half a percent. The Dow's up over a hundred. To be honest, I didn't really see any economic news that that would warrant stocks going up today, <laughs> or any day. <laughs> well, any day for that that matter. But um, yeah. the economic reports that were out this morning were, you know, neutral and negative. If anything, they're probably more on the negative side. Well, I mean, do you think this is an overflow from uh, that stellar report from the FOMC uh, last Friday? Oh, you mean not uh, really? You mean Jackson Hole? The Jackson yeah, Hole? Yeah, Jackson Hole. Yeah. Well, you know, I think that's what's really going on here is the um, the dollar yen. The dollar the yen is is gone down over two percent versus the dollar since last week. That's a lot. And that's, that's the, you know, the, the dollar yen is the lever they use to manipulate the, the stock market and to manipulate the precious metals markets. Yes. Yeah. So on August, on August 26th, which was Friday, yep. the dollar yen was a hundred. So it was basically at what they call parity. And now it's at one oh, it's a little bit over one oh two. So so the yen's dropped two percent over the weekend versus the dollar. That's a huge move, and that's so that's that's why the S and P is up because all the hedge fund algos that key off of the dollar yen, they're dumping they're dumping yen versus the dollar, and they're moving into stocks, and they're probably also selling gold. Well, I might as well get rid of that. Get rid of all their gold. I mean, there's no reason to have real money, but they don't. They don't have real money. They have they have paper gold in the form of futures. So you know they they have they have fake money all the way around. Unless they own, unless there's any hedge funds that actually own physical gold. Yeah, and and speaking of uh, gold, what about that uh, action on Friday with the uh, straight down followed by straight up, and then just a, a continual bleed out Friday afternoon on gold in particular silver was similar in in reaction but i just thought that that was just blatant criminality right in your face and uh jeff nielsen had a, uh, an interesting theory on on what happened in that obviously the down move was the western algos going to work based on the information coming out of Jackson Hole. And Jeff believes that perhaps there is a stronger, bigger algo coming out of the East, either China, Russia, or a combination that said, not today. And if you look at, if you look at that straight down and straight up, and it went higher, I mean, gold was, went, went significantly higher and silver was up around 19 i believe i mean it was like just i think it was actually bizarre. straight up and then straight down so so it, it went it went straight up around <clears throat> would have been around uh 6 30 east coast time 4 30 denver time which is that's about an hour after the london gold fix and there must have been some sort of news report out that triggered the straight up action. I don't know. I don't. I didn't really. Uh, you know, as as the August days wear on and we get closer to Labor Day weekend, I kind of tend to pay less and less attention to the directional movement of of the precious metals because they almost always go down in August. It's it's the slowest period of the year. You know, whether there's algos here or algos in the east or whatever, I don't think it really matters. You know, it's it's yeah. it's the paper trading is what's dominating it, it it's dominating the, the action in gold and silver right now. And it's predominantly paper trading out of New York and London because the 
the uh, Eastern Hemisphere is kind of in their their last period of quietness before their their big seasonal buying really kicks in. So, I mean, in, in all truth, gold and silver have held up better this month than I would have expected. I think they're doing just fine. I, I haven't had an ounce change in, in my vault in, in quite some time. <laughs> <laughs> Each ounce is still one ounce. <laughs> well, if anything, I think, I think uh, you know, you should be using this opportunity to, to, to accumulate physical gold and silver if you have money to do so. Yep. There's a lot of people that seem to think that there's going to be something really nasty coming this fall. We've heard this, we've heard this before, and, and, and you know, this sentiment, it, it, this isn't isn't anything new but it seems to be a little bit different have a little different flavor this time around especially with all the people all the big names that have been moving into paper gold and and possibly even physical gold you know over the past few months and we've and it is an election election year which always brings instability and with brexit just happening i mean what what do you think dave i mean do you think that we're in for a pretty rocky ride for the rest of the year I mean, it seems like it to me anyway. A rocky ride in terms of the market volatility or? Yep. Or just in general. I mean, it's, you know, we've got wars that you and I have talked about all last week that are, that are getting very unstable or becoming very unstable and just everything in general globally just seems to be very out of balance at this point. And you have these all of these big moves that are happening. Like I said, you know, these big name investors that are coming into, into paper gold and possibly physical gold. That's, that's usually a telltale sign that something is, is really wrong. At least that's historically. Well, I, you know, I think things are really wrong in the Western hemisphere more so than the Eastern hemisphere. It's interesting because, um, Jim Rogers gave an interview last week, and as you know, I think I mentioned to you, I've been, I've been, and I just sort of went public with it a few weeks ago. But I had been thinking that if you had a way to invest in short-term Russian Treasury bonds, which are paying you know ten percent, that you should do that because at some point the really smart money is going to and big money is going to figure it out, and they're going to start moving money into into Russian assets. And Jim Rogers gave an interview over the weekend and he said, he goes, he goes, I'm buying Russian treasury bonds. <laughs> he goes, he goes, you know, the yields are outrageously high. And, you know, I wish I could, I wish I could put all my money in those in yields and find yields like that. So he, he's been investing in the Russian stock market and the Russian and Russian government paper. And that's, that's what I've been saying. Because Russia is in, you know, for as much as the Western media propaganda smears Russians' economic situation, their economy is on much more stable footing than the U.S. economy is for many reasons. Well, they don't have near the debt that we have. Nobody has near the debt. No that one we has have. near the debt that the U.S. has. I mean, everyone's pointing at Japan or they're pointing at China, blah, blah, blah. And he addresses that. He said, look, China's got a lot of debt. And they're going to have to work through it. But China's going to be the, the country to watch in the, you know, in the 21st century. Period. And, you know, we. I mean, we we already know that. You know, yeah. it's, it's, he wasn't telling us anything we don't know. But um, and, and you know, just to circle back to gold, he also mentioned that he holds a lot of gold, physical gold, physical gold. But right. to get back to gold, you know, it's it's especially volatile in the last couple of weeks of August because that's typically when, in terms of the global gold you know, gold money flows, you know, the East is still a little bit asleep ahead of their big seasonal buying period. And the, you know, our markets are quiet and it's very easy for, for the manipulators to manipulate all the paper markets in the last week and, and really the, well, the last two weeks, but especially the last week of August. I mean, this week, I expect to see a lot of volatility in, in the markets and the metals. Is that because uh, everybody's on vacation, they're getting their last hurrah in for the season? Right, exactly. Now, there was uh, something interesting that was reported by John Brimlow's gold jottings, and that was that the delivery volume on Friday into the Shanghai Gold Exchange leaped up to 51.8 tons. In one and day? It, 
Well, Thursday it was 29 tons, and on Friday it was 51.8 tons. My God. And also the um, the X duty, the, the Indian X duty premiums on Friday were at the they're still below the legal kilo bar import import point, but it's the most gold friendly reading we've seen out of India in terms of the X duty premium, which is really it's an X duty deficit right now because it's still it's it's below where they can legally import, but it's it's high enough. The price of gold over in India is probably high enough for for Dore bars. In fact, he mentions that he said in the afternoon, based on the afternoon reading, which was a minus twelve dollars and thirty cents, Dore bar, bar Dore imports would have been practical. And we know that smuggling is 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 rampant right now over there. So, um, and his comment was that India and China seem to be waking up, and that's what I think is happening. Well, I mean, so I, you know, I would expect to see. They could take gold a lot lower this week. I don't know because it's still mainly just the paper manipulators operating. But I think over the next four to eight weeks, I think we're going to start seeing much higher prices of gold and silver. If India wakes up the way and and their gold moves back above board and they start importing like they traditionally do or historically have done during the, the next four to six weeks, then gold could could really have a have a very massive move i mean couldn't it i mean yes and, and, absolutely and if, and if china uh, m- continues to move you know 51.8 tons of gold in a single day that is just that's that's hard to even fathom that 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 volume of gold i mean i know it's not unusual but it just seems like an unbelievable amount at this time of year and right now with everything going on there comes back to the to, to one of my favorite questions where where is it coming from i mean well that's why i think the, the price of gold is is going to go a lot higher i think that they're starting to run out of ways to source physical gold to to move into china and india i mean they've squeezed, they squeezed ukraine they've squeezed venezuela um and libya well, no. Libya was a while ago, but yeah, I mean, but recently they squeezed Ukraine, they squeezed Venezuela. I think obviously they've hypothecated and rehypothecated all the gold sitting in London vaults many times over. I mean, I'd still love to see a, a wide open look at, at the GLD vault and do a, 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 a serial number accounting. I saw an article on Zero Hedge, and I didn't read the details of it, but it sounded like... Um, the Net- Netherlands central bank refuses to give a, a serial bar accounting of the gold in its fault, which tells you that's been hypothecated. So, um, and you know, people, people don't have to believe that the gold has been hypothecated, but by the time they find out that it's been hypothecated, it'll be way too late. You know? Yes. It won't matter. Right. <laughs> Cause the criminals will have it in their own private vault and see you later. Get out of here. Right. So in terms of gold, I mean, it's, it's, it's somewhat oversold right now, but it's not ridiculously oversold. However, I'm just looking at the RSI. If you want to go by, you know, the, the usual mainstream technical indicators, the RSI terms seems to be turning back up a little bit. <clears throat> I mean, gold, it's right now, it's below its 50 day moving average. Um, historically, when we've had a big move in gold, we get an occasional 200 day moving average and that could happen. I don't know. I don't think it can happen at this time of year. I think if this was late February, you know, I'd say, you know, probably maybe hedge a little bit if you want to trade it or just go away for a couple months and don't look at the price because they might take it down to the 200 day moving average. So, and we went below the 50 day moving average on gold in, toward the end of May and it actually went quite a bit below the 50 day it went about halfway between the 50 and the 200 and then it and then it rallied again so um we'll see i think i think every time the fed comes out and says they're going to be raising interest rates like fisher did on friday i think they lose more and more credibility oh you mean they still have credibility i they're still you know they have credibility with the trading algos because that's what was driving the the, the price of gold on friday 
you know, as soon as the headline from either Yellen or Fisher would hit the tape, gold would get ha- would get hit. So I don't see how the, how anybody could listen to anything that they have to say. I mean, it's just it's just nonsense at this point. I mean, I understand that that you know, as far as the the big money, the hedge funds, the institutional money, and all that, that they that's what they have to listen to because of the way that their books are made. But it's like those guys have to go into the, into their meeting rooms and just laugh at, at some of what's going on and what's being said. I mean, because it's it's so ridiculous. What's going uh, What's going on with the with the housing market? You've been doing a lot of reporting on that, and we were on the phone earlier before the call, and you were out riding around looking at uh, falling uh, prices and price reduce reductions and for sale signs everywhere, painting the landscape. Well, I mean, Denver's gone from one of the hottest markets in the country to, you know, again, I I haven't seen data for this month, so I don't know exactly how many homes are actually being sold and closed on. Um, So, for instance, if you drive by a for sale sign and see a pending contract sign, that house hasn't sold yet. They're still waiting on getting financing. Which means it could fall through. It means it could fall through. I've heard of a couple homes recently that fell through because the buyers couldn't sell their home on the other side for the price they needed to get to make their 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 contract terms on their purchase work. I think that a lot of the activity at the middle to lower end of the market has been driven by flippers. And I think, and I heard from a real estate professional, she said, you know, some of these flippers control eight to ten homes. And they're going to get stuck with those homes, especially as volume dries up. I know volume's driving up and drying up in Denver because I'm seeing, you know, for sale signs pile up in areas that I haven't seen them pile up like this since 2008. And these were the areas that I used in 2008 ahead of when the mar- mortgage market really crashed to to tell people, look, housing's going down. And I'll say it again now: housing's going down. I was I spent the weekend at my significant other's house in an area that I haven't seen for sale signs in her area, her little specific area where she lives. I haven't seen any for sale signs in nine months. And now I was driving around there a little bit yesterday and there were, there were several for sale signs that had been put up recently. And if you're looking to sell a house, putting up your, putting your house on the market at the end of August, isn't the time to do it. Yeah. Because you've got school and, and various, You you just have a whole world of things that are going on. Right. This is one of the lowest seasonal. We're going into one of the lowest seasonal periods of the year for selling homes. It's just the opposite of the precious metals market. We're going into one of the highest physical buying periods of the year. But um, I think that there's a combination of people who may have taken on homes that they ultimately couldn't afford. And they're getting worried and they're putting their house on the market. And I think there's also people out there who are starting to see the same things I've been talking about. Again, I was early. I was early the first time around when the big bubble popped. But I think a lot of people are starting to see the writing on the wall and they're trying to get ahead of the ahead of the pack, so to speak. Well, I heard about someone who was trying to get ahead of the pack last December in Miami. She had a $1.5 million high rise condo. Looked out one day and saw a bunch of cranes in the in the skyline, and she and her husband put her condo on the market. Well, guess what? It's still on the market. Wow! And now that we see, you know, Miami is the, the condominium market there is essentially crashing. Vancouver, yeah, you know, Vancouver according to what nice. I read, you know that that market's crashing. I've heard Toronto is starting to crash. San Francisco is starting to crash. So. It's it's all coming home to roost, you know. For for about a year there, it looked like this real estate market was gonna was like Jack's beanstalk. It was gonna go up to the sky, and all of a sudden, someone sprayed a lot of Roundup on the beanstalk because it's gonna start <laughs> crashing. Well, and and that that eternal optimism is shared here in Nashville. And I was talking to my neighbor who is pretty heavily involved in the local real estate. And apparently his uh, real estate agent told him that the outlook for Nashville was very high and that and that what is being passed around is that they see the Nashville market 
as on a, on a steady footing and upward until 2020, which is four years from now. And I think you commented, Dave, that that's that that is the one of the main signs of a major bubble. Oh, absolutely. I, I think I think the people who are saying the outlook is high, I think they were high. <laughs> <laughs> they must have been out there in Denver. <laughs> yeah, they they took a visit to Denver on a on a on a pot holiday, <laughs> a pot tour. <laughs> there, yeah, there's actually travel agencies that that's what they arrange. They arrange yes. pot tours of the, all the dispensaries. That's what it was. It was the National Realtors Association did a uh, pot <laughs> tour and came back and then reported to to uh, my neighbor about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't see it. I mean, and and the thing is, is that I keep asking, where's the money coming from? Where are the jobs? I mean, there's, I've been hearing for months and months and months from various sources that there's a hundred people a day moving to Nashville. And the same, I ask them whenever somebody says that to me, I ask them, where are they getting the jobs? What kind of job are they getting? Where are they getting the money for to, to afford these now median house, uh, median house uh, cost is around $200,000. And most of them that I see are well over, are, are close to 300,000, if not above 300,000. And then once you get into the upper market, where I'm starting to see, you know, price reduce signs, they're setting on the market a little bit longer. And all of these other little subtle signs that I think we've discussed before. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. I mean, how do you, what kind of job is out there that's going to produce an income that will support a 2000 to $2,500 a month rent or mortgage in, in today's market? Unless you've got a good paying job, you're not going to be able to afford that, period. Not well, you, you know, there's some government jobs that probably do that. It was interesting because I, I um, had to take my car into the shop last week to get serviced and get brake pads replaced. And so I, I took an Uber ride home and it was sort of a middle-aged woman who was driving and I started chatting with her and it turned out she was a government worker and quote unquote had health problems. So she quit her job. And she was telling me about her house, and it, it, it turns out she had a house that was in a really nice part of Denver. And actually, this this part of Denver, if you drive through there, you'll be you probably be pretty shocked at how many for sale signs are up. I mean, the average house in there is probably you know seven eight hundred thousand dollars, and there's yeah. just for sale signs everywhere. But she had a house; she has a house in this area, and there's also some areas where the homes are more like you know five hundred six hundred thousand. They're old, way older homes. Uh, she probably, I think she lives in an area that hasn't been scraped yet and rebuilt with McMansions. But again, her house is still probably five, six hundred thousand dollars. And she, she told me, first of all, she's driving for Uber. And in order to make ends meet with her mortgage, she's rent, she's renting out three of her bedrooms in the house. Wow. Yeah. But the point here is, you know, people have government jobs. They can probably buy a pretty nice house because the government's, especially if it's healthcare related, because that seems to be where if there are any jobs that are being created, truly that's where the jobs are being created. But it also sounds like Obamacare is starting to fizzle out. It sounds like a lot of the insurance companies are pulling out of the network. And so that's going to pull the rug out from underneath Obamacare and the, those, a lot of those healthcare jobs. Yeah, they're all going away. Right. So in terms of where are the con, where are the, what are the jobs that are being produced that are going to produce incomes like that? Well, I don't know. I guess if you're a housing flipper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, uh, that game's coming to an end, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. See how that works? Yeah, companies like Cisco laying off 20% of their workforce. I know Wall Street's laying off big time. That's why the Hamptons and New York and high end New York City prices are crashing. So, I'm telling you, it's, it's all, it's all going to come to a head in the next three or four months, I believe. So um, that's just, what I was looking for right there. Yeah. And just to kind of circle back here again with gold, you know, everyone's freaked out. Well, guess what? Since since mid-December, 
Gold is up 24%. Now, you show me any asset class that's out there that's up 24% since mid-December. Oh, wait, silver's up even more than that. And I didn't calculate those numbers. Let's just focus on gold. Um, since, since early June, gold is up 9.5%. Since early so you're talking about talking about three and a half, you know, under four months, gold is up almost 10%. I mean, you know, we're going to get a pullback here. And this is, you know, this is a part natural pullback that we're seeing and it's part manipulated. And the fact that it was ready for a natural pullback made it easier for the manipulators to manipulate it lower. So going forward, let's just wait. Let's just see if, you know, gold can hold the 50 day moving average. I don't I don't know if I think it, you know, I think it will. I think it'll bounce back. But you know, you don't have to jump into gold right away just because it sold off a lot. Wait and see if it climbs back over the 50-day moving average and then jump into it because then you're probably going to go a lot higher from there. Sounds like sound advice to me. Well, I guess that's as good a spot as any to end on, don't you think? Seems like it to me. We can actually end on a positive note for a change. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I can pull out some doom and gloom. <laughs> <laughs> we got plenty of that in the, in the first 25 minutes. So, <laughs> hey, It's Monday ahead of a holiday weekend. Everyone needs to have a good time, chill out, take it easy. That's it. Enjoy what you can while you can, because I don't know how long we're going to be able to, to keep enjoying this. Well, we're just going to keep smiling and keep doing it. And uh, I guess we'll pick it up on Thursday and hopefully have uh, something – bright and cheery to talk about well we'll see it'd be <laughs> interesting to see if we'll have higher gold prices to talk about or lower i think it could go either way this week it wouldn't surprise me if we're lower though okay well we'll look for that and report back on thursday on the other hand it wouldn't surprise me if we're higher <laughs> <laughs> well you have a good week dave and i will talk with you soon speak to you later